one. Essentially, there's your South Atlantic anomaly and the four poles, and we have an equatorial plane of inertia at the center point. And then, so this would be looking from the top down, and then when we look north-south, we see what Steve is showing with the refraction. So there's this would be the star field in the north and the star field in the south because as it rotates the, the donut, one of them anyway, like it's there's more than one toroidal field, but the main one as it rotates causes our our celestial rotation of the star trails and everything else because the whole thing is moving. Like it's it never stops. Right? Yeah. But we're centered and it moves. It mo all moves around us, right? So. And that would we're be dead center. That would be akin to the four corners of the Earth, I would have to say. Correct, yeah. Yes. Yeah, like these these would be the four pillars, right? The four pillars, and this is their equatorial plane. And then when, we, when it starts to move, you know, we end up with this type of celestial field, north and south poles and the donut, and there's the four pillars. Right? Yeah. Take this type of magnetic field model and take the, ma the map of the actual, you can just, you know, Google the magnetic field of Earth, right? And you'll get a map. And it'll it'll lay over this pretty much exactly like that. You'll see that that's the South Atlantic anomaly. This is Canada. That's Russia. And this is the more focused one. You can actually see it actually does focus that way in a real magnet. This little sharp focal point, of the blue one on the bottom right, is actually where Australia would be. And that's the that's that focal point. Mm -hmm. You know, this is basically would be my three dimensional vision of the model. You have a, a north polarized toroid. A south polarized toroid we're on the plane in the center this is what we see is renders to us as our celestial dome and you know you just keep drilling down in until we get to your personal perspective you know, we're way in the we're way here in the middle here right and in a three-dimensional sense i mean that's what it looks like it's the four poles there's the magnetic field right if you tilt it just the right way there's your your four poles right one two three four we're on the plane and when you look from the top down, well, then there's your rotating. You could just take that and rotate it on the Y. Right? You'll see, I think about my center cursor, I suppose, to center would help. Uh, so cursor to center, right? Rotate on the Y, then you should see that it'll spin around that way. And right? there's the south pole going one way and the north pole going the other. And that's just the way we see it. And it all renders to us yeah. through this magnetic setup. It's the perfect capacitor. It is. So we're, we're able to pick up this dielectric rotation that's essentially coming from the sky. And so I guess it comes back to the question then, is that, you know, if we have this toroidal field above us, what exactly is the mechanism that's causing it to rotate? And uh, one thing I've been considering lately is does the Schumann resonance of the Earth have anything to do with this rotational rate? Um, that we're obviously would be very close to or once a day, once every 24 hours. Um, do you do you think? And, and I know that Steve and Mike, in their model, proposed this this kind of heartbeat uh, of the Earth. You know, where it, where the field is expanding and contracting and expanding and contracting. And as we all know, the Schumann resonance is like 7.83 hertz. Um, but I, I have been unable to and rising, of, yeah, it's just and like, rising, it's right? Pushing seventeen or something right now, yeah. Or, yeah, right. There are times when it actually changes quite dramatically, which is which is quite interesting. But so, what exactly do you think is then is the mechanism that's causing this this rotation of the sky? Well, the field the field has to be in motion, right? The field as it switches polarity at the center of the capacitor so to speak under our feet kind of where the little target there is right it's uh it creates this figure eight pattern it switches polarity underneath of us goes back the other way comes out the other way it's, it's in constant motion like uh, like steve in their model was kind of showing this because they i think projected the sun and where the sun follows that toroidal field path where it renders to us it's right the whole thing is doing the same thing it's doing the same thing and because of that you get torque Right, um, like a Faraday disk spinning has torque. That's why uh, Bruce De Palma could never get over unity because you know, as you spin a high, spin a Faraday disk at high RPMs, well, the torque of the material in the magnetic field starts to interfere with the magnetic field of the entire environment and just yes. causes drag. You'll never get over unity. Right, it's the same thing, and that's why a gyro, if you spin a gyro up really fast, it'll drop faster or elevate faster because it's spinning, so it actually accelerates. 